welcome to my channel, Purposeful Play, where I talk about all things early childhood education. I'm Danielle and I teach 4K in Wisconsin. And today I wanna to share with you some of my favorite sensory table bin play ideas. So let's get started. I wanted to start with um, sharing with you some of the things, fillers because you call them fillers, stuff to put in there. Uh, so I shall tell you some of my favorites. I don't didn't bring them all right here beside me because that would be a lot of stuff, but um, I'll start with the really basic ones. Rice, sand, water, water with dish soap in it, um, snow, and I have my list right in front of me. Oh, beans, I bought a big giant bag of kidney beans at Costco one year. Um, what else? We also have, if because our sensory bin is big, you know, you, you, te you tend to have to have a lot of stuff to even like fill it up just a little bit. So sometimes we use these bins and they're just smaller and then these can just go on the table and the kids can have sort of their own smaller sensory table sensory bin. And in those ones, the little ones, we often put um, water and shaving cream. We put um, water beads. Uh, let me show you which ones I have. These are the water, water beads I got um, on Amazon and they came, how many are in there? 20,000 beads. So they lasted all of last year and we've only used them once this year. And they also came with these great scoops. They're like a big cup and they squeeze together to scoop them. And I mean, they're magical. So they start off, you know, this, this big, and then they grow to like about a marble size. You can get them to grow that big. So these are really fun in those other small, those little small bins. Um, snow, we've put snow in our big sensory bin. We have one year, I bought a big piece of sod. It was when we were doing um, insects. And I put that in the sensory bin and it turns out that there were actually insects in the sod. So that was, you know, a whole other learning experience. I was just putting out little, um, little insects in the grass and they could kind of create their own small world in the sod. But there were also insects that were in there. Some other fun things to put in there, um, cotton balls and pom-poms. Just toss a whole pile of them in there and see what they do with them. Shredded paper our school was actually, you know, we have a shredder and I asked for them to collect it for me for a little bit. And then I had that in there, especially during the reduce, reuse, recycle study, we had paper in there. I think that's all I can think of right now for fillers. And now I want to share with you some of my favorite um, tools and extras and accessories that I like to put in there. So, um, of course you need a variety of scoops, bowls, um, spoons and all those kinds of things to go in there. I just grabbed a couple to show you guys. Dollar store uh, and yeah, most of this is from the dollar store. Um, these actually were you being used with flour the other day, but funnels are fun. These are great for water, for sand. The water beads um, actually go in here. I know that they're not called water beads. People call them something else. I don't know what they're called. I call them water beads, but Orbeez, I think they're, some people call them. So that's really fun because they come shooting out of here. So funnels, um, tongs are great, little tongs. These are, you know, smaller ones. I think these ones were from Walmart maybe or the dollar store. I'm not sure. They weren't expensive. And then we also have these little tweezers, the little smaller ones. And we have kind of ones that are sort of in the middle of these ones. Great for shredded paper and um, picking through sand and really anything. Um, what else did I pull out here? I like, I bought these one year and those are fun to put in really sand, water, actually put in anything. Those are a lot of fun. And I have these little test tubes that I have a couple of these. This is great in water to make potions. You can also add sparkles to your water to make it really fun. Um, and I have little jars as well, like plastic jars that are maybe you know, about that big, this, maybe that around that I got from the dollar store, I think. A couple other things I really like are ice cube trays. These are from Ikea, I believe. I think I got those ones at Ikea. 
and then I also have just regular old ice cream trays. These ones have, I have two of these ones, but they have the lowercase letters in them. Can you see them? And then um, I hide these magic beans in them. And so the magic beans, I spray painted gold one year and then they have turned around letters written on them. So I have to hunt for the, the magic beans and they put them into the matching one. So there's uppercase and then they match them to the lowercase. I love, I don't know where I got this guys, but this is one of my, this, I don't know where I would have gotten it, but it's an old beater and in water, in soapy water, this creates a lot of bubbles and is just super, super fun. I wonder if they make these new. It doesn't look rusty or anything. Maybe it's a new one. I actually don't really know. I, would, I just thought of something else. Did I, this one, a little um, turkey baster. I've got a couple of these. These you got to be careful with because the kids can just like shoot things really far with these. We also have the teeny tiny um, pipette, pipettes, um, but those are over there at a different table for something else right now. But those are fun. Um, let me think, what else? Some other things that are considered tools, shovels and buckets. Um, if you put snow in there, you can have a spray bottle with colorful water in it. Um, plastic eggs are fun too. Scissors, if you're using like shredded paper, things like that. Actually, you can even do it with the grass. We did it with the sod because then the kids were like mowing the grass with the scissors. That was really fun. Mm, um, sifters and colanders with water or sand. And I think that might be all I'm thinking of for tools. And then there's other things, which I already showed you the beans. Those are not really a, considered a tool, but they're magic beans. You could put any kind of letters and numbers in there, see if they can find them. You could put in, um, in if you have sand or, I wouldn't recommend water because they might get rusty, but sand or shredded paper, you could put magnetic letters and, and have little fishing rods there and the kids could go fishing for them, or they just have to hunt for the letters and numbers. Um, I love small world or things. So animals, dinosaurs, and then adding rocks and little trees or branches. Um, what else with those? Um, little wooden blocks too, so they can build like little homes or whatever with those. Um, what am I forgetting guys? I think that's all I'm thinking of right now. Anything that, oh, and then another thing, what are you doing with it? What are you learning? What is the purpose of a uh, sensory bin or sensory table? Well, of course, there's the creativity of doing whatever you want with it. There's just that feeling, sensory experience with all the stuff that's in there. You can make it an academic literacy, math, learning experience or learning opportunity. You could, um, of course, there's a lot of science that can be involved in it. Uh, you could do sink or float. Like I said, you could be fishing, you know, that's magnetic and not magnetic. Um, and there's a lot of fine motor as well. Depending on what you put in there, you can have the kids be working on a lot of their fine motor skills. Also, if you have, let's say you only have one of these or one of these, then there's that solving problems, negotiating, taking turns, trading, all that kind of stuff when you have more than one person at the sensory table. Now in our school district, we are allowed to have a sensory table, sensory bin right now. Kids have to wash their hands before they use it and also when they're done with it. So it's clean hands in and then right away they have to wash their hands. So I'm really thankful that we're allowed to do that because I think there's a lot to gain from having a sensory table. And I will try and link some things below that I have a link for. I know some of the things like these I bought at a dollar store. Um, some of the things like, you know, garage sale, that kind of stuff. So I don't know if there's a link for them. And then I will also put a link to a document, like a Google Drive document that'll list my ideas for the, the tools and the sensory band fillers. And 
you can have a look at that. You can print it for yourself or you can add your things to it. So you kind of have a master list of all the things you can put in there. I just want to remind you that if you do want to have your own list of it, I'm not going to grant people access to it. You will have to make a copy for yourself and then that way you can add, you can edit, you can print and all that kind of stuff. So that way it keeps my copy, my copy, and you're not editing my copy. So I think that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. My favorite sensory bin ideas. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you liked it and also the thumbs up, I guess, if you liked it and have a happy day.